What's up everybody, welcome to my channel. In this video today, I will be sharing with you how you can migrate your on-premise SQL Server to an AWS SQL Server it's using the native method of doing a backup and restore. So we're going to be taking a backup on our local server, which is going to be my laptop or your laptop for this tutorial. And then we're going to upload it to S3, just like we're going to upload it to any regular storage location. And then we're going to do a restore from S3 to our AWS instance. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So the first thing we're going to do is create a database on our laptop. So we are going to assume this is the server in your organization. So this new database and I'm going to call it RDS test. When you're doing the restore, you want to ensure that the SQL server that you are migrating to is either a higher version or the same version that you are doing the migration from. So now I'm going to just take a backup of this. So right click on the database, head over to task and select backup database. So this is the location that my backup will be sent to. So I'll be removing the backup from the default location because you might run into issues when you're trying to upload it to S3 because of permissions. So the next step is that we're going to go to our AWS console, navigate to the RDS section and then upload our backup. And I am utilizing the free tier for these tutorials. And do not use root for these type of stuff. I'm only using root because this is just for tutorial purposes. Never ever ever use root to do administration purposes. Ensure you create an IAM user for all your work that you're going to do in AWS. So continue. You can utilize search feature and navigate to S3 if you have not visited recently, but it's in my recently visited section. So I'm just going to do that. And S3 stands for Amazon Simple Storage Service. So S3 S's. So I'll be uploading it to MR SQL data. Upload backup. And I'll be browsing for the backup file. Now you can also drag and drop this backup so it's rds test select upload and upload to continue so the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to modify the rds database so we can perform the restore of our backup to the instance so by default we cannot do a restore without configuring what is called an options group now the options group will allow us to specify the backup and restore feature which is not enabled by default and this will allow us to perform the restore to our RDS instance as well as we are going to be creating a role that allows us to communicate from the RDS instance to the S3 storage location. So let's head over to RDS, search for RDS in the search section and then you select RDS. So if you don't have an RDS database, you can create one. So I already have a SQL Server RDS database, so I'm just going to select DB instances. Select your database. Then select modify. And then scroll down to the additional configuration option section. Now by default, it's using the SQL Server Express version 14 options group. Now, Head over to your left and select options group. And then we're going to be creating a new option group. So we can call this RDS SQL Restore. And let's give it a description and say restore from S3. Select the database engine, make sure it's EX for Express or whatever version you are using. 
So the EX is for Express and I'm running an Express version. And it's version 14. You want to ensure you're creating the right minor version because if you create another version, it's not going to work. So now that we have created the option group, we want to modify it and enable the restore feature. So scroll down to the section that says option and add option. So the option one here is the one that says SQL Server Backup Restore. And then we're going to need the IAM role. I have several roles here, but if you don't have any, let's create a new one. So it's going to ask you for the S3 destination that you, you have your backups in. So I have two and mine was MR-SQL data. So we don't have to add a prefix here. So we want to do this immediately. So add option. Oh, we need to, we missed the role. So let's specify the role name. So let's call it SQL DB restore and add option and then add option so the group was still successfully created so let's view option group to ensure everything is fine right so the name is actually here so let's go back to our databases now select your database modify the instance and scroll down to the advanced options so we're going to be changing the options group from the default to the one we just created which was RDS SQL Restore scroll down to the end and continue now we want to apply this change immediately so modify database ensure you do the apply immediately so let's go back to our database we're going to go configurations until these are applied and you see the green tick then you can complete the restore so let's give it a few minutes and then I'll resume the video so our option groups has been successfully synced so let's go to connectivity and grab our endpoint name and then connect to our RDS instance So launch management studio and connect remember we are going to be using SQL Server authentication admin and specify your password and just connect to the instance so let's validate the versions of these servers so so expand databases expand master and select new query so we're just going to be doing a select and the attack version to check the version of the instances so this query here will tell you the version that I am running let's go over to the RDS one and do a new query as well So my RDS is version 14 and my on-premise is version 12 or 20, 2014 versus 2017 so we can do a successful backup and restore. So now we're going to be taking a look at the store procedure that we need to execute in order to restore our database from S3 to our RDS instance. So it's right here. So this is the store procedure, right? This is telling you the database name, this section is telling you the schema, and this portion is telling you the procedure that is being executed. Now these are the different parameters that the stored procedure takes. So, so this is the database name, this is the AWS resource location which would be the S3. This is if we were restoring, this parameter is for if we were restoring a encrypted backup. This one is for if we want to overwrite and type is if we're going to be doing a full or differential and number of files if we have a split backup where we have multiple files like several differential backups or log backups 
but for our case we already have a full backup so the default will be full so we don't need to specify that we only need to specify the database name and the and the amazon resource name which is the s3 bucket name and the name of our backup so i believe our database name was rds test that back and it was mr bucket let me grab that real quick and then this is the name of my bucket so let me just copy this and paste it there now so i'm going to comment this block of code here and then the database so i'm going to be recreating it as the rds prod so we're essentially we're restoring a test to a production so let's hit execute and see how this turns out let me see if i'm on the right server correct let's check the status execute so even though the last cycle is created you can't access the database until the status is 100 percent and this the life cycle is saying success so if we try to access our database now we won't be able to do it so now we should be able to access our database expand and here's our database but unfortunately i didn't put any data in it so we couldn't validate that so that's it for now guys thank you for watching see you in the next video